Uh, hi everyone, hope you're having a good day. Um, me and Kavita today are going to quickly go through different types of local anesthetic with you guys this, uh, today. Um, Kavita, can you tell me um, about uh, the local anesthetics which are most commonly used in, in the UK dental practices these days? Um, well, we tend to use a lot of lidocaine, mm -hmm. articaine, and yeah. also prilocaine. Those mm -hmm. are probably the most common ones that we use in practice. Okay, so prilocaine is really the cytomers. Yes. Isn't it? Which is adrenaline free. Uh, so in lidocaine, how much adrenaline is in there? Uh, 180,000. And uh, our solution is 2%. Okay. And for articaine, it's 100,000, and the solution is 4%. Okay. And what are the indications? So lidocaine, you would give when? Well, you, you give it for infiltrations, buckle, palatal infiltrations, mm -hmm. leg, uh, inferior alveolar nerve blocks. Mm -hmm. Whereas articaine, it's mm -hmm. usually just for really. Yeah, because the articaine has been known to give paresthesia and that's why we don't really use it for ID block. Having said that, there was a new article out that you can, but probably best to avoid it. Uh, with prolocaine, because of the preservative, uh, what's the contraindication? You don't want to give it in third trimester pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It can cause fetus, uh, fetal defects. There's a risk to the fetus. Okay, so uh, for instance, if you are um, you, uh, giving as an ID block, um, first of all, um, can we just show how we give an ID block? So basically, you, this is how you insert the needle. I think this is how you have been trained, isn't yeah. it, Kavita? So how do you how do you? We were taught that when you palpate um, the oblique ridge with your left thumb and then. If you're right hand, if you're right handed, you mm -hmm. go along from the premolars on the um, opposing mm -hmm. side. So like this? Yeah, and you go in at that angle and mm -hmm. you see your hip bone and then you retract a little bit, aspirate, make sure you're not in the artery mm -hmm. and then inject. But so that's the key point, you definitely need to aspirate a little bit to make sure. But most of the syringes these days are self-aspirating anyway, so you don't need to do that. Um, basically with uh, lidocaine, you can use it in any side. So as Kavita quite correctly said, for infiltrations, you can give it for uh, palatal, buckle, you can give even lingual, so when you're doing extractions, you can give it for long um, uh, buckle. Um, articane, mainly infiltrations. I would avoid articane for intraleg because I've found from my own experience get a lot of post-operative uh, ulcers on the papilla and it can be quite um, a discomfort. I know for extractions a lot of people can give intraleg, uh, so probably best to use lidocaine uh, so that they don't get too much discomfort. Now, um, if somebody is allergic to adrenaline, what yeah. would you use? You can use adrenaline free. Mm -hmm. The pilocaine side that you can get is you can get adrenaline free. Okay. So it's the same solution. That would be the best one to use. Now, if you were to um, give intraosseous, right. uh, what are the indications for intraosseous injections? And do you have any picture you could show us? Yeah, so intraosseous, um, you could use intraosseous to avoid. Mm -hmm. an ID block. So this mm -hmm. is an intraosseous. Or you so this is the intraosseous. So um, in order to avoid an ID block, you could actually focus on giving the anesthetic straight into the bone. And uh, basically, if you were to uh, anesthetize this molar, you could actually approach um, just between the two roots where the nerves come out through the apex. And that way you could then deposit the anesthetic. For premolars, you could do it on either side of the apex. Um, and that would actually localize, the, um, uh, anesthetize the tooth and avoid the ID block. They're quite straightforward to use. However, the syringes and the needle types are different and even the cartridges are shorter. So that's a completely different device to what we normally use. Now, um, um, so how much? Um, so how much is in a cartridge? How much anaesthetic is actually in a cartridge? Well, it's two point two mils cartridge, okay. so okay. about forty four milligrams of anaesthetic. Okay. So do you have you 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 had a chart? So there's a maximum dosage for the amount of anaesthetic you can actually provide. Uh, for your patients, so um, there's a really nice chart here which is going to explain all that. So, how much uh, maximum number of cartridges uh, for adults for articane is seven? It actually does go by the weight, but normally on average is seven for articane for adults. Bupivacaine, which is not really used in UK these days, but it's 10 if you were to use it. Lidocaine, maximum 13, but hopefully no one's going to get to that. <laughs> and the prelocaine is about 8. For the kids, uh, for children, um, go according to their weight. And uh, the, if, in a 20 kilogram child, 
1.4 is maximum for articane, 3.9 for lidocaine, and for cytonus, 2.2. So this is a really good chart to have as, as a local measure. Now, what are the um, problems associated with uh, anesthetic? What risks are there when you administer uh, anesthetic? Well, it's common risk, a lot of patients are nervous, so mm -hmm. they might have to ventilate, or they may even faint, just seeing the needle, or whilst you're injecting. Yes. Other things, you should, the patient can be allergic. Yes, um, that's good. Also, if they're hypertensive as well, you're not sure if you want to use yeah. adrenaline as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so other things are, um, if you're giving an ID block, you could get facial palsy if you accidentally uh, go into the parotid or or if you're very close, because everybody's anatomy is different. So uh, if you inject close to the parotid, you could get facial palsy, which doesn't last a long time. But if their eyes close um, or halfway closed, then you do need to give them eye drops so that they don't develop any problem or dryness in their eye. Uh, but normally after a few hours it does wear off but they might have to wear an eye patch as well okay um allergic reactions is uh, when people have allergic reactions they can get anaphylactic shock to it but they will tell you if they're allergic yeah a toxicity is obviously if you go over this dose and then they become toxic and also uh, sometimes um you can get permanent anesthesia uh but it's very very rare um, and also, as you said, fainting and nervousness, but that is probably not due to the amount of anesthetic you've given. It's no. probably the nervous and they've just fainted at the sight of the needle. Um, and now, after you've given the anesthetic, how long does the anesthetic last? Um, well, it depends on which anesthetic you've given. So, mm -hmm. lidocaine has got a longer half life than something like articaine. So, mm -hmm. lidocaine, you'd say like three, four hours. Okay. Um, articaine about two hours and then it should wear off. Okay. So, what type of instructions do you give your patients? Um, post-op post -op instructions, mm -hmm. obviously, according to the treatment you've delivered anyway. Okay. But in addition, um, be careful not to bite your lip, tongue, yeah. um, depends on where you've given it, okay. obviously. And nothing too hot or cold, so they may burn themselves and not okay. realise. Okay, good. So um, I think um, the, the key here is that um, before you um, actually administer any local anaesthetic, check the medical history. Make sure you're aware of what kind of medical history your patient has. If they've got high blood pressure, you probably want to avoid adrenaline. If they're allergic to adrenaline, you want to uh, avoid it. If they're pregnant, you probably want to avoid cytonus. Um, you know, and also to see what type of history they've had with anaesthetic. You can tr uh, backtrack the records and have a look at that as well, isn't it? And then also, always it's nice to put some topical uh, before you actually give anaesthetic because that actually gives them a bit of um, a, a placebo that they think that, you know, that's going to help. And um, also uh, make sure that the site you're giving anaesthetic, on a different site, you can sort of put your mirror there so that it takes their focus on the site that you're giving the anaesthetic and they'll be more focused on the place where you're pre pressing with your mirror and that takes the effect away as well. Um, warm up your cartridge. You can either warm it with your hand, um, if you, with your gloves, make it warmer a bit, um, especially first thing in the morning. There's water baths, you can put it in there. Um, and always keep it in the blister pack, never open it because then the bung gets uh, contaminated um, and only open it before you actually do your um, administer your anaesthetic and also inject slowly, there is no rush, yeah? The slower you administer, the quicker it will work and the less pain your patient and the patient will thank you for it. Thank you for watching. Thanks.